My name is Matteo Piovella and I have my practice in Milan, Italy. Cornea irregular astigmatism management is a real nightmare. The penal effect was recently adopted and certified by small aperture IOLs adoption. The advantages of penal IOLs are to provide astigmatism correction up to two diopter with no need of toric correction and to be the best choice to improve the quality of vision in aberrated eyes after refractive surgery experience. The idea to introduce piggyback small opening device is a significant attempt to provide a temporary improvement for patients with irregular astigmatism. On the other hand, the decrease of available light due to the penal effect provides sensitive loss of contrasensitivity at time of sunset. A very mild complication if uh, compared with important ones depending other unaffected techniques to manage irregular astigmatism. Enjoy the video. The producer has a license contract with Mortar. Oh my God, I'm late. The doctor told me to be there at seven. Oh honey, you've been to so many doctors. Why do you think this would be different? I don't know. I just don't want to lose hope. Darling, did you see my new contacts? I can't drive without them. Hurry up! Take an Uber! The purpose of this film is to present a new pinhole intraocular device, which was developed to overcome irregular corneal astigmatism and high-order aberrations. This concept of pinhole implant was first published in 2015, and after that the device underwent multiple refinements. Recently the current two open loop platform received a CE mark and was released in the European market. The device is made of a foldable black hydrophobic acrylic and is intended for sulcus implantation in pseudophagic eyes in a piggyback configuration. Main indications are post-RK, post-PK and keratoconus. In those cases, the pinhole effect can be a true hero. This 65-year-old patient underwent radiokeratotomy in the past and was left with severe coronary irregularity. Note the size of the pupil in relation to the RK optical zone. Not surprisingly, after bilateral cataract surgery, he complained of glare and severe starburst and was very disappointed with his cataract surgeon. What can we offer to those patients? We decided to address this problem with this simple yet elegant solution. The device is implanted through a single 2.2 mm corneal incision and is directed to the ciliary sulcus. This is the eye the day after with excellent centration and great improvement in visual acuity. He was so pleased with the result that he wanted the same thing done in the other eye. So, one month after the first operation, we implanted the device in the fellow eye. The result was outstanding, and this is the image one ear out. Although the device was created for eyes with normal iris, it is especially appropriate for those cases with concurrent iris defect. This patient had a terrible knife accident, 
with a large corneal laceration and iris loss. He was treated with corneal suturing and cataract surgery. However, after this initial treatment, he complained of disturbing glare and poor visual acuity due to the combination of a highly aberrated cornea and a large pupil. The incision was made posterior to the corneal laceration and the implant is carefully directed to the ciliary sulcus. Again, we see excellent centration and a significant improvement in visual acuity with reduction of dysphotopic symptoms. In our study, we implanted the device in 24 eyes. Mean follow-up was 22 months. These are the results for uncorrected and best corrected visual acuity. Now some important questions. Is this device safe? Piggyback IOL implantation is a common and safe procedure as long as proper lenses are used. However, several complications have been reported with single-piece acrylic lenses in the sulcus. So, to avoid such complications, this device has very specific characteristics for sulcus implantation, such as a larger overall diameter, angulated haptics, with a thin, rounded and polished profile. The occlusive portion has a concave convex design to avoid contact with the primary IOL. Do patients report dark vision? No, this was not frequently observed. Our explanation to this unexpected low light tolerance relies on the Stiles Crawford effect. Going through small pupils, the light rays reach the photoreceptors in a more parallel orientation generating a stronger visual response per unit of light energy. Therefore, despite the reduction of light entrance, the luminous energy is better utilized. Studies have suggested that a reduced pupil size can in fact improve contrast sensitivity. Another issue related to the monocular reduction of light entrance is the induction of the Pulfrich effect. This optical illusion is most evident when one reduces light entrance in one eye and analyzes the movement of a pendulum, which appears to assume an elliptical pattern. This has been reported in cases of unilateral cataract and could be potentially responsible for accidents with moving objects. We tested our patients with a moving pendulum and there was no reports of any distortion. Do patients report visual field constriction? No, this was not reported spontaneously. Visual field analysis reveals a subtle reduction of overall sensitivity with no clinical relevance. How is the retina examined? The black acrylic has the interesting property of being transparent to infrared light, allowing examinations of structures located behind the implant. The posterior segment can be evaluated with infrared OCTs. With wide field add-on lenses, a larger field of view of up to 140 degrees can be scanned. In conclusion, the potential of pinhole optics is remarkable, and this new technology may be a tiny hero in the tough battle against irregular astigmatism.